We've got over 3 million people without powers. We were able to restore about 2.4 million after Helene relatively quickly. This is even more significant in power outages. And we also have some damage on the east coast of Florida. I mean, that has produced flooding. Uh, it produced surge in places like Daytona Beach and St. Augustine. And then even in the heart of Florida, like Orlando, there was so much rain on the northern side of this storm uh, that we are having some flooding events. So I'll be out in the field surveying this, but our guys are on it. You know, we staged 50,000 utility workers in Florida. We brought them from as far away as California to be ready to go as soon as that storm has passed. They're already on the west coast of Florida working to restore people's power. We also have huge search and rescue assets. So anyone that's needed help um, is getting that help right now between our local, state, and federal partners. Um, and we'll, we'll survey the damage and get people back on their feet. But we'll get through this. Governor, even if there hadn't been a, a, a second storm following uh, Helene, it, it was already, uh, you were right in the middle uh, of trying to recover from that, I, th I think. How, how badly did the same uh, areas or, or people, how badly were they affected uh, or, or exacerbated by, by this new storm? Was there a lot of overlap at this point? Well, where Helene made ground zero up in northern Florida, fortunately, you know, they had modest uh, and minimal impacts. I mean, you had 15, 20 feet of storm surge in places like Steen Hatchie uh, up in the northern part of Florida. Uh, this storm bent much further south than that. One of the issues that we had, though, Joe, was um, on the west coast of Florida produced a lot of storm surge, Helene. People had to muck and gut their homes. It did property damage. So you had massive amounts of debris that were basically on the side of the roads. These local governments, you know, they have contractors that'll come in and take it, but these hurricanes, these guys take a long time. So what we did this weekend, once we saw the storm form for Milton, uh, I did a state of emergency. I took every truck in the state of Florida that we have across our agencies. We surged them to the barrier islands in like Pinellas, Manatee, Sarasota County, uh, and we started hauling debris 24 seven. So these guys were out there doing debris up until the wee hours of the morning yesterday right until the wind started picking up so we were able to knock out probably about half of that debris uh, as a result of that emergency mission so it's too soon to know kind of what the debris the remaining debris did but the reality is you know when you have a storm uh, there's going to be damage no matter what if you got a lot of debris out that turns into projectiles it could do a lot more damage so we sprung into action and help with that uh, and we'll get a better sense today as people survey the damage um, you know what the remaining debris may have done in the federal response, I know you've uh, you've been in close contact with the president uh, on these, and it you know we don't don't want to. There's an election coming, and we don't want to to politicize this uh, at all. But I, we all remember Katrina and, and some of the narratives around uh, around what happened. How do you characterize the federal response at this point, Governor? Right, right uh, from your point of view. I've worked well with uh, the administration. Uh, the president's approved our request. We're going to be sending a post-landfall major disaster declaration request. I think that that's going to be approved. Uh, we leverage whatever resources are available to us uh, to be able to help our people get through this. Uh, and that's been my, ever since I've been governor, I've worked with both President Trump and President Biden. You know, you haven't really seen politics uh, get into these storms. I think we both uh, understand that, that people's lives are at stake and, and you got to rise above.